Guys, it's been a while. Welcome back to the musical tour of The Spiral. We're getting down to uh, the bottom of the barrel in selection, if not in quality. This should be the next to last world currently, you know, because the game's always advancing and updating. But my goal with the musical tour of The Spiral was always just to have some sort of closure by visiting every world. I've been putting Mirage off for a while, so a lot of these sounds were very old and reconstituting this track from old libraries and stuff did take me a while, uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself as usual. How about we take a listen to the Desert Canyon Combat Remix. do you say there is a loop all right so king zile said of this one even though it, it is combat there should be some openness to it it should reflect the environment desert with dunes and open deep canyons i don't feel this needs to be necessarily a fast tempo though you can build up the intensity exotic complements the background theme here so i had previously done crocotopia which is kind of more of an egyptian inspiration and we're back in the deserts here and basically when you're doing kind of a pop culture version of Middle Eastern music, this is reductionist, but you basically have the Byzantine scale. So is sort of where you start. I had plumbed a lot of that stuff in Krakatopia and wasn't feeling particularly inspired along the same directions here. A lot of times if I'm looking for inspiration, I like to check out drum loops and see if that provides a germ of an idea. This guy is uh, from. This guy is from a library by Cinesamples. I know, shocker, but it's called Deep Percussion Beds. You can play the low drums and then kind of stack some of the medium uh, range drums on top of it, and then also the high percussion. So you can kind of build up. I backed that up with these uh, distant drums, which is hold on to your hats. Another Cine Samples library, Cine Toms 2, and these are the Spartan Toms. Just really a tacky. I think they listened to the music from the movie 300 and were like, we need those Toms that would accompany this fury. And that layers on top of other deeper drum loops really well, I found. 
I still feel like loops are a little cheaty. Like I don't want to just, you know, hold down a key for four bars and go there. I wrote a, I wrote a song. Somebody else wrote that. So if I'm going to use a loop, I like to decorate it differently. So I've got, you know, temp hits and some gongs and gong effects and stuff. And then on top of that, there's the reek, which is a Middle Eastern tambourine. So that really funks up the, uh, the jungle loop here. speaks in between the big hits don't 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 really decorates and fills in the holes a little bit that's going to be a theme going forward i was trying to utilize some of the more northern middle east cultures kind of plumbing some of those for inspiration this is a turkish ney just a nice little airy desert flute i found this instrument the saz it's a stringed instrument from Turkey. There are loops that you can play with it, but again, I like to. I like to play my own parts here. So. So there it's kind of punctuating some of those string staccato parts. I'm a sucker for drone libraries, man. This is a library called Orbit. So this patch is called Lost and it's, when I was looking for sounds, I was looking for a lot of kind of drier sounds, sounds that, you know, kind of sounded like a arid desert wind. sometimes just sort of putting that in the background kind of gave me some inspiration and there's another one called Prometheus it's got a lot more edge on it and just listen to all that animation I mean it's just it's going kind of uh, flowing through these different patches it'll pull one in and out Kind of as needed just to sort of ship the focus into something down here where it says dfd slow dark evocative this is from tone hammer i think and then i believe that they split into two companies this library is now from 8do i've talked about them before it's a range of world vocal samples and they take like a singer and that singer style and then make a library from it and this is the francesca forgotten voices francesca library long drawn out syllables in scales kind of perfect for some middle eastern music i love this library just for inspiration slowly evolving using a lot of that uh, byzantine scale So I said that I don't like using kind of loops and pre-done phrases. Um, there's no other way to get those really nice smooth transitions. And that's why I make an exception here. <laughs> I can't wait until there's a library where I can kind of perform those sort of things and make it do exactly what you're looking for it to do. Realize how long ago I wrote this. Wait a minute, how long ago did I write this? 2016, it looks like August of 2016 is when I, so it's been a while. This is a theme I composed to be sort of the desert theme. So I like the exotic flavor that that little flip at the end. Da, na, na, da, 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 da. That kind of gave it a little bit of that Middle Eastern ornamentation, but the theme is very cinematic and very, dare I say, epic. As I'm envisioning, you know, walking through these desert canyons and the beautiful vistas and scenery that you're looking at. I wanted kind of that broad, expansive melodies. It's not my normal approach to kind of Middle Eastern music. I really felt like it helped communicate, you know, the epic nature of the world here. <laughs> The 
the music from Wizard 101 has always been a balance between world inspiration for the music and the orchestral fantasy score. I realized I could kind of branch out orchestrally and find some more tonalities to play around with and then just decorate that with the with the Middle Eastern instruments. There's some neat other themes. The the hub theme from Mirage I really liked and the Chronoverge. I remember that just being a cool visual for my brain to work on, you know, how do you express what that sounds like? I think Mirage in general is a lot more vast and more mind expanding concepts of the huge epic stories going on behind it. <laughs> Just a nice dusty sound. I mean, I can almost picture dust coming out the finger holes of that flute. So I think that wraps up Mirage, which leaves us with one more world to visit. I can't remember what it is right now. Wait a minute. How come we're starting at three minutes here? What is this over here? Don't get excited. These are discarded ideas. Sometimes I'll have like a false start where I'll start writing something and I'll, I might discover something like over here where it's like, oh, this is really where, this is the first good idea I've had. And then rather than starting a new session, I'll just uh, start over here and give myself a little note to start there. Um, I, I have listened to this and it's terrible. So, so please set your expectations accordingly. can hear you ask me right now isn't there going to be anything interesting happening here no the byzantine scale in case you haven't heard me talk about it before has a flat two if we're in the key of c instead of using a d it uses the d flat and also uses a flat seven so this is a very stereotypical on the verge of insulting uh line which is why i didn't use it and why you shouldn't hold it against me um, but it does, you get right into that kind of flavor. To me, the, the sound of the Byzantine scale is the minor thirds that it kind of creates. So if you took the first three notes of the C scale, flat the D, so C, D flat, E. That interval between the second note and the third note is now a minor third, which has a particular flavor. It's a, a darker, the eyebrow flavor. And then the top part of the scale goes F, G, A flat, B, C. So another minor third in there. But the major third, the E and the B is the major seventh of the scale. It's a really interesting combination of darker tonalities and lighter tonalities. It gets a little twisted, right? Everybody knows the minor scale. <laughs> one of the minor scales. If I just pick notes from that scale to play, it'd be very predictable and boring. And I think it's just, it sort of loses, like all things, if it's just one tonality, if it's just one feeling, doesn't really express the richness of human emotion. So I can get a lot more mileage out of kind of combining those two, especially. <laughs> right, that's got a little longing in it. It's just a richer kind of tapestry of, of different uh, feelings in there. where I found something that's like, oh, this sounds like, this is kind of a cool groove I can work on. And it moved this bit over here to start, took it from there. 
I do spend a lot of time uh, spinning my wheels at the beginning of an assignment, looking for new things to say. And I, that is part of my process to make a bunch of lame stuff <laughs> at the beginning, just trying some things and a lot of them don't wind up working. This happens to me a lot where I will start something and it takes me this long to really get into the vibe. I might just need to chill out on a drone for a bit and goof around on the keyboard trying to find something to say. And then it's really best practice for for me to throw away the first you know minute of anything I write because that was me trying to find what the idea is. Awesome guys, we got one more in the I guess it'd be considered the normal season of musical tour of the spiral. I don't really know how long we've been doing this. Uh, one thing I would like is if we can hit a thousand subscribers just so I can say I did it once. Uh, so if you know anybody that would be interested in this kind of series, please hip them to it. That would be much appreciated. And the next episode should be kind of a special one. So I'll see you then. Thanks for everything. Later.